It is good to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Eric. I serve as one of the elders here at Bethany. Um, and whether you're joining us in person or you're tuning in online, uh, we just want to welcome you this morning and just celebrate a time that we can gather together again and worship uh, our Lord and Savior in person. Uh, so we have a number of reasons that this morning is special. The first one being obviously that we can gather to get, gather together again in person. Um, but also we have a special group of people that we want to honor this morning, uh, our graduates. So this is Graduate Sunday. Um, and so in just a little bit, we'll have a time to, to kind of honor them and um, speak some words of encouragement to them. Uh, and then also, uh, not with us in this service, but in first service, we had a, a special couple, George and Edna Gaiman. Uh, they have been with Bethany from the beginning, and today was their 73rd wedding anniversary, so we celebrated them in the first service. Um, so... For all of you that are joining us online, you can, you can send them a, a happy anniversary as well. And lastly, uh, and so fitting, uh, we're joining together and celebrating for the new series that we're starting and how fitting it is to where we are today. Uh, we're going to be learning what it means to walk with God in an unknown land. Um, and I know that may not feel applicable to our lives right now because everything seems so certain, uh, but I think it will be a very timely series um, as we journey through that. I'm sure as you've already noticed coming in, we're doing a few things differently. Uh, obviously the seating is different. Uh, we don't have bulletins. Uh, obviously you know that because you don't have bulletins. Uh, but we can still submit our prayer requests either via email, uh, Bethany, let me get this right, church office at bethanygf.org, or you can drop the prayer requests in the back, uh, in the boxes as you exit. Uh, we will also not be holding our normal offering. Same thing if you want to drop the offering in the offering boxes on your way out, or you can give online. Uh, but we're doing just a few things like that differently. Um, and then at the end of the service, we would just ask kindly that you get out. Um, so we, we don't want to linger in here for too long. It's not as big of a deal with a second service because we don't have another group coming in after. Uh, but we got fresh air, we got beautiful sunshine. So after the end of the service, if you just want to kind of make your way out, that, that way we can get to cleaning everything up and everybody can get out in the fresh air. Uh, and then lastly, I just want to take a quick second and speak to uh, just... One of the big differences, obviously, is we have some people that are wearing masks and some people that aren't, some people that are tuning in from home, some people that are here. Uh, and we just want to speak to that real quickly. Um, wherever you find yourself falling on that spectrum, uh, we want to provide an environment that makes you feel welcome, makes you feel safe, makes you feel comfortable. Um, and in a culture today where it seems like every issue we have gets polarized and you have to pick a side and fight till the death, uh, I want to extend just our hope as a church of Jesus Christ is that we care more about the person and less about being right or wrong. Um, and so this morning, we're, our prayer is really that this issue will not divide us, but that it will bring us together. Uh, and so wherever you fall, if you're wearing a mask, if you're not wearing a mask, if you're at home tuning in, um, we're happy that you're with us and we're happy that you're here. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Jonathan and the worship team. We'll join in singing. Yeah, I'll just say that uh, first service was probably about four times this full. So uh, I assume there's a whole bunch of people at home uh, watching this because this is the only service we're streaming. So this one is the more virtual service. The first service had a lot of people in it. But we're glad that you guys came to second service or else first service might have almost been too full. So excellent. But yeah, I invite you to stand, uh, join us in singing. You know, it, we're moving most of our singing to the end of the service just to help maybe with viral load if, that's, if that is a problem. Um, but we're just going to take some time and sing together and praise God and worship Him. So yeah, I invite you for this first song to join us in singing.
And every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb Answer graduated from Hingletown Mennonite Schools Venture Program and Lancaster County CTC Protective Services Academy. He hopes to become a career EMT firefighter. Elise Everly graduated from Garden Spot High School. As a senior, she received the Art Department Academic Hall of Fame Award and the Presidential Award of Excellence. She plans to continue working in customer service at Hoover's Produce in Reading. Lauren Rossi graduated from Lancaster Mennonite High School. She hopes to study criminal justice and play soccer and softball at Eastern University. Morgan Aldifer graduated from Liberty University with a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Gregory Knoll graduated from Villanova University with a master's degree in nursing anesthesia. 
Rebecca Pierce graduated from Temple University with a Master's of Arts degree in Communications, Media Production Studies. Jeremy Snader graduated from Lancaster Bible College with a Bachelor of Science in Education, Early Childhood Education, and Biblical Studies. Joshua Snader graduated from Lebanon Valley College with a degree in Political Science. Congratulations to all our 2020 high school and college graduates. Yeah, so this morning, we just want to take a brief time and just honor our graduates, whether they're here, whether they're tuning in online, um, and just speak to them a little bit because it's a, it's a milestone. It's a, it's a really exciting day. Uh, and I guess the first thing I would say is, wow, I'm sorry that it had to end this way. I, I mean, I don't think anybody envisioned your graduation being in this time, in this, uh, the way that, that it had to happen. Um, but I do pray that if you're wrestling with that disappointment and frustration, uh, my hope and prayer for you is that, that God's mercies would be new each day and that you would find them sufficient for you uh, in, that, in that wrestling. Uh, and graduation, I would say, is a time that's always filled with all kinds of emotions and feelings. Uh, the joy of reaching a goal, the satisfaction of accomplishment, uh, the familiar coming to an end, something new on the horizon. Uh, for some, that brings great joy. For others, that brings anxiety. Uh, but regardless of where you land, my guess is that at some point um, you're going to face some uncertainty, whether it be now as you enter the workforce or as you look forward to college or, or wherever you find yourself. Uh, my encouragement comes to you this morning from Jeremiah 29, uh, 12 and 13. Uh, and this, this instruction, this promise came to the Israelites in a time of exile. Um, but it's still, it's still very true for us today, especially when some, some days we might feel like we're in exile. Um, so Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13 says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Uh, so my hope and my prayer for, for our graduates this morning uh, is that you enter this time of new beginnings, uh, whether you're anxious, whether you're excited, uh, that it may begin with a humble prayer and an earnest seeking of the Lord, uh, because we have this. When you seek me with all of when you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me, and that's a promise that we can cling to. Uh, so, if we have any graduates here this morning, I'd ask you to stand, and I'd like to pray for you. If you're at home, I'll let you decide what you want to do. Um, but let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this time that we can gather together. Uh, God, thank you for our graduates. Um, these are, are people that have worked really hard for a long time and have accomplished the goal. They've reached the, the destination. Uh, and so, God, I pray that as they look to a new, new horizon, look to something new beginning, uh, God, would you go with them? Lord, would they continue to seek and chase after you uh, for direction? And would you uh, be found by them, God, as your word promises us that you will? Uh, Lord, thank you for their hard work, their dedication, um, and may you bless them for that, Lord, in the coming months and years. Um, God, we pray now for the message this morning. Um, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth um, that you allow us to, to read and understand. Uh, God, would you be with Steve as he brings the message? Would you soften our hearts? Would you prepare us uh, for the truths that he's about to share with us? Uh, and God, would they impact our lives in a way that makes us more like you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Whew, been waiting nine weeks for that. You know, when you say it to a camera, nothing happens. <laughs> morning. 
Uh, it's good to see each of you here. This is, a, this is a great crowd. I don't know what we expected, but uh, so good to have you here, and I hope that you're comfortable, and uh, I'm excited, excited to worship together. And uh, again, the, the majority of the worship sets coming following, and that's kind of cool sometimes because your heart responds to the message, and then you get to worship uh, following. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And uh, you know, for us, it was, uh, for Pam and I and the family, it's kind of weird for, uh, you know, we've been here now five months, but in some ways for many of you, it feels like we've only been here two and a half months because we had the, the connection meals and all of that, and it all kind of happened, and we had all the names, and then poof, <laughs> they're gone. So uh, I know you guys have been so gracious, uh, uh, but it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to uh, whatever new normal is, is here. Uh, and the nice thing about this, uh, I, I was a little intimidated about actually speaking to people, um, but we have two services now, so, you know, one of them will get it right. I don't know. Uh, all right. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Uh, we are so proud of you. What an amazing accomplishment in such difficult circumstances. Um, yeah, w what a time of uncertainty. I can't think of uh, a situation, certainly in my lifetime, in which uh, our graduates are facing so many challenges. What will that? What will the next step be? A lot of uh, and and graduates, you have so, shown so much uh, flexibility and resilience through this whole thing. Just driving down the main drag in New Holland and seeing all the graduate signs, it was just a beautiful thing. But also kind of like, huh? But but beautiful. And uh, so we we uh, we bless you. We encourage you. Kudos for for a job. Well done, uh, which kind of brings us actually to this sermon series, which is uh, walking with God in the unknown land. Um, and so uh, for graduates, I think that this kickoff sermon is particularly appropriate because what will the next thing look like for, for you? And, and I'm thinking, okay, so if you, if you graduated and you're going into the workforce, Wow, 13.5% um, unemployment. What, what is that going to look like? Just, just unknown. And uh, ironically, uh, perhaps even more so, if you're going to college, what will that look like? You know, where will you be meeting? Will you be online? So just so much uncertainty. Um, but you know what? I, I woke up this morning with this thought in my head. Not a day has gone by since this pandemic has begun in which God hasn't been God. Uh, and he is still on the throne, and he is, uh, he is faithful, and he is walking with us. So um, I invite you to take your Bibles this morning and turn to Genesis chapter 12. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, as, as we begin. We're, uh, I'd like to invite you on a walk, and... Uh, is my, do I have the Ortberg book there? Is it? Yeah. Huh. Isn't that terrible? We're, we're live streaming right now. Everybody's seeing me walk down, and now he walks up. See, now that's the kind of stuff I would have cut out if it happened online. All right. So John Ortberg wrote a book um, a couple of years ago. It's called, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. And I love the way he starts this in the preface. And I just wanted to read a section to you because it's kind of appropriate to where we're at as we talk about walking with God. He says in his book, I want to invite you to go for a walk. The Bible is, among other things, a list of unforgettable walks. The first one is taken by God himself, who we are also told used to walk in the garden in the cool of the day. But as a general rule, God asks people to walk with him. There was the hard walk that Abraham took with his son Isaac on the road to Moriah. There was the liberating walk that Moses and the Israelites took through the path that was normally occupied by the Red Sea, and the frustrating walk that took them round, on the roundabout way of the desert for 40 years. There was Joshua's triumphant walk around Jericho, the disciples' illuminating walk of Emmaus. Paul's uh, inter interrupted walk to Damascus. There was, there was the walk so sad and holy that it received its own name, the walk from the Praetorium to Golgotha called the Via Dolorosa, the Way of Sorrows. 
God invites us to a walk. I, I, I agree with him. God, God, God invites us to a walk. Not that, that, that he walks with us, but that we walk with, with him. And in some ways, I think that this is really the basic description of the Christian life. Uh, Jesus' words to those first disciples were, come follow me. He was walking, come join me in that walk. Uh, Paul, in Ephesians chapter 4, he, he makes the statement that we would walk worthy of the calling that we've received. And so, God invites us to walk with Him. The most basic definition of, of discipleship is walking in the Spirit. And so, one particular character in the Bible, I think, uh, uh, illustrates all of this, and it's, it's, uh, it's that of Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament. And so, you've turned to to uh, um, Genesis chapter 12. But before we begin the series, I, I want to actually read the New Testament commentary on this Old Testament passage, which is found in Hebrews chapter 11. You don't have to turn there. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. But this essentially puts this whole series into three verses. And so I thought it would be appropriate to start like that this morning. Hebrews 11, 8 through 10 reads, By faith Abraham... When he was called to go to a place he would later receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the, in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city whose foundation, whose architect and builder was God." And so this summer, as all of us are kind of stepping into an unknown land, I invite you, let's take a walk together. Let's walk with Abraham and Sarah on their journey that God called them on. You know, one of the things that we find when we examine uh, Abraham and Sarah's journey is that we have so much in common with them. I mean, they did a few things right, but they did an awful lot of things wrong too. And yet, God was so faithful to them. He, he you know, and, and, and I think it just points out the walk of faith is never about our faithfulness to God. It's about His faithfulness to us. Um, you know, there isn't a, cha uh, I guess maybe chapter 12, notwithstanding, it maybe is an exception, but as we move forward in here, there's not a single chapter that goes by in which Abraham and Sarah didn't screw up in some way. And yet, God never gave up on them because they were in a covenant relationship. Now, the good news for us, brothers and sisters here today, is that we too are in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. He has, has proclaimed His faithfulness. First of all, He cannot deny His own. And so, God will never give up on us. So, we're beginning in, in um, Genesis chapter 12, and... What I'd like this message to kind of answer, or the question that we're asking is, what does it take to walk with God? What does it take to walk with God? And so the first thing that I want us to see, it's found right in the first verse of Genesis chapter 12, walking with God involves leaving. Now that kind of seems obvious, you know, if you're walking, you're going from somewhere to somewhere. Look at verse 1, the Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, if you've had any Sunday school at all, you know the story of Abraham and Sarah. They left their home. They went to the promised land, and God eventually gave them all of that. But I want you to notice that that first verse is in the past tense. It says, the Lord had said to Abram. And so if in, you're in your Bible and you look back just to chapter 11, just a little bit before, uh, particularly in verse 31, you'll find that God had called Abraham and his father Terah and the entire clan, he had called them out of Ur of the Chaldees to go to Haran and then on to the promised land. Now, we know of Abraham from, uh, you know, what we know of him in the promised land, you know? So he was a, a nomad. He was a shepherd of considerable wealth. He lived in tents and went from place to place. And, and there were other people in the land, and we'll get to all of that. that. That's who Abraham was, right? Well, no, actually not really, because the place that he left, Ur, was completely different from the promised land. 
I want you to see this here, this, this graphic. This is, um, this is the excavation site of Ur. Ur was like the major metropolitan area of Mesopotamia. It, it's currently found in modern-day Iraq. Uh, and, and this is a, a, a picture of the ziggurat. You know what that is? The worship temple that they had. Uh, and, and so... Uh, it was a huge place. They, they worshipped uh, many gods, but this was the temple of Nana, the moon god, you know. And Ur was actually a really sophisticated urban place. Here is a picture of what, a graphic of what it might have looked like uh, based on the excavation that they currently know. And you see that, man, it's like there's that dominant temple there and, and the Euphrates River is running across the north and they, they, they kept, uh, they like channeled the river to go around the city and into the city so that ships could come up the river and they could sail in, in through the walls and into the city and they could do trading there. And it was a really, really happening place. It was powerful. And so, uh, you know, Abraham was not the shepherd nomad guy that we thought. Abraham, um, at this point, at the point of God's call, was a cosmopolitan uh, um, Middle Easterner of urban, in an urban environment. He had sophistication. Um, in fact, Hebrews 11, the passage that we read at the beginning, makes it a point. He said that he lived, ended up living like strangers in a foreign land. He lived in tents. <laughs> so before that, he was not in a strange land, and he was definitely not living <laughs> in tents. And so for Abraham, this life change, this walk with God, this invitation to come alongside God was going to be a huge transition, a radical shift from urban to country, from one land to another. And so God had a lot of work to do to get Abraham to follow him. And I think sometimes God has a lot of work to do in our lives as well. So notice the specific instructions that God gave him. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country. The first thing that, that God was asking uh, Abraham to do was to leave the country that he was in. Now again, Ur was a, like a city-state, like Athens and all of that. So it was, it was, that was the unit. Uh, and so Abraham, I want you to live, leave your city, your surroundings, your region, your urban environment, uh, this sophisticated urban, I want you to leave it. Um, and and uh, I, I want you to live like strangers in a different land. Notice the second, uh, second part of this, oops, is uh, I want you to leave your people, your people. Well, for Abraham, this is the larger ethnic group, the Semitic group that he was in. They had customs, they had culture, they had language, they had religion. Uh, it, and God was calling him to a completely different place. Palestine had different gods, it had different jobs, and different terrain. The last thing that, that, that specific instructions on his leaving was, uh, Abraham, I want you to leave your father's household. Um, and so this is the clan, the family unit, the extended family. So Abraham, God was saying to Abraham, I want you to leave your, your history, your genealogy, your lineage to go to a new place. God says, come, walk with me. Now, some of you I know have experienced this in a literal sense. I'm looking at Steve Lever, you know, it's like, man, God called you to go overseas for an extended period of time. What a, what, a, what a walk of faith, but what a, what a transition, you know, completely different. Same thing kind of happened for Pam and I, um, you know, from the point that all, both of our families got off the boat <laughs> until now, we all, we lived in, well, in, in southeastern Pennsylvania in Montgomery County. That's where we were from. I mean, when I uh, took the church in Boyertown, uh, it was like I was worshiping the devil or something, you know. I was like, <gasps> you're moving 18 miles away from home, you know. And then when, when we moved to uh, Virginia and received God's call, let me, let me tell you, it's like, I'm, I'm still... I'm, say, I'm still working on getting back in the inheritance. Let's just say, you know, it's just like, what? what? You're, but then after 18 years in Virginia, you know, where we had set down roots and come to love the people and all, then to move again was just plain hard. 
And so I, I don't want to minimize this. Following God is not the easiest thing in the world. Sometimes it's physical, you know, and we actually have to literally move. But I want to ask you, uh, 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 what, what is God calling you to leave? As we walk with God, it often seems like He's calling us out of our place of comfort and our place of familiarity into a new place of trust and dependence. So, what is He calling you to leave? And I was just kind of thinking, well, what, what does He call us to leave? Well, you know, I think one of the things that He calls us to leave is, is sometimes sin. <laughs> you know, there's, there's this, uh, this long ingrained attitude or, or behavior or thing that's been embedded in our life, and we just kind of come to accept it and we live with it. You know, and God says, come out of that. For you to get to the next level, you need to address that in your life. Maybe uh, it's, it's a relationship, I think, of, uh, of our graduates, you know, teen, our teens, the young people. You're, you're, you're in a relationship, and it's just not healthy, and, you know, and, and the Lord's telling you, you know, this is not going to be the person that you need to settle with, but you're, you're so familiar with it, and God calls us to move on. He calls us to an unfamiliar place, but the place that we're at feels comfortable. It feels right. In short, God asks us to leave. Now, this is, this is a New Testament teaching as well. It's just not Abraham. You may, you may remember in Luke chapter 9, uh, Jesus is walking along, and it's like a series of people come up to him and say, hey, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. Uh, the first one said, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, uh, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. What was he saying to that guy? He was saying, well, if you come follow me, you're going to have to leave your home. Literally, I don't have a place to sleep. Well, that was too much for that individual. The next man came to him and said, uh, Lord, first let me go bury my father. Now, it wasn't that he had actually like, just passed away, um, but that my, my, my father is in his declining years. Let me, let me just stay at home and take, and then after that, Lord, after that, I'll, I'll follow you. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Um, the last guy came and said, uh, Lord, let me, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus said, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Now, the thing I want to point out out of this is that all of these things, these three things are really legitimate things. Um, you know, but, but what Jesus was saying is that to follow, what Jesus was pointing out was priority. The priority of their life uh, was messed up. And to follow Jesus means that Jesus takes priority over everything. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, there was that rich man who, who came and said, uh, uh, you know, how do I inherit eternal life? And Jesus has this interesting dialogue with him. And in the end, he says to him, uh, well, okay, good. Go sell all of your possessions and give to the poor and you'll have treasures in heaven. And the guy didn't do it because he was wealthy. Uh, in Luke chapter 14, Jesus said, If anyone comes after me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, that person can't be my disciple. Now, again, I don't think Jesus is asking, asking us to defy the, 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 ten, the fifth commandment to honor our father and mother. He's pointing out that for us to follow God means that we make him a prior, priority. And so for every one of us, Wherever we're at right now, when God asks us to move forward, it involves leaving something behind. Notice, secondly, walking with God involves trusting, okay? The second part of this verse says, it's, go with me to a land that I will show you. Now, is there, any, is there anything more crazy than this, okay? That God would ask Abraham to pack up his family and to move and not tell him where he was going. I hate that. But you know what? That seems to be God's modus operandi. It seems to be the way that he often operates. That in, when individuals are called forward, when a church like Bethany Grace, is called to go to the next level. He doesn't tell us what that is. You can't make a plan for it. You just have to follow. Now, why is that? 
Well, well, I think that many times the things that God will teach us in the journey are even more important than the destination. So are we willing to travel? Are we willing to go with him? Now, I want want you to see this. This is what God was asking him to do. Okay, so Ur is here, and the promised land is over there, and it's a thousand miles. God was saying, "Ah, pack up things, start traveling, I'll show you. How did that go? You know? I mean, they're, they're traveling along a day, a week, a month? Are we there yet? And it's not because you have to go to the bathroom, you know? It's just like, are we there? Are we there at all? And they travel and travel and travel. If they went 10 miles a day, which is probably a huge stretch for an entire clan, it would take them three months to get there. God just keep traveling, keep traveling. Wow. So what an amazing act of faith. It involves trust to follow God. Let me ask you two questions here. Are you willing to follow God or do you have to have a guaranteed outcome or destination? God asks us to walk with him, but he may not show us that. He may not have a guaranteed outcome. I'd love to have a guaranteed outcome. I'd love to know that everybody will come back here at Bethany and uh, we'll keep these two services and the church will grow. I don't know what the new normal is. I don't know. But God asks us to journey. I would love to control the outcome for my kids. I would love to make the decision. Just ask me what you want me to, what you should do. Just ask me. Ask me, you know. Anyway, you know. But, but uh, I can't do it. I have to trust. It's the walk of faith. And so, uh, here's the second question. Do you have to know where you're going, or is it enough to know that God's leading you? Now, please hear me. As I say both of these questions, it's like I have a target on my head, you know, because I don't think I do very well at that. It's like, I mean, all the time God calls us to do things, and I'm like, uh... You know, eh. and I think of even the over, even the transition that, my, that Pam and I have experienced over the last uh, year. It's like I don't think I did very good very often. You know, it's like I, w- I was second guessing all the time. It's like I would have been like three hours out of Ur and saying, "Are we there yet? What? What? What's going? You, you don't mean that I have to go over that mountain? Come on!" And that's just the way sometimes we are. I'm so glad that it's God's faithfulness. <laughs> And not ours. Um, So God calls us to follow him. But I think that this is where many of us, probably most of us, get stuck. Um, uh, It's where our walk with God kind of stagnates. We know exactly what God wants us to do. We've received clear instructions. But until he provides more or better information, we're like, I'm not getting on the bus. So here as as believers, we have this incredible opportunity, this invitation. God says, come come on, come on, walk walk with me. We're like, "Uh, can I? Well, where are we going? You know what? He's the God of the universe. He's got it. He knows. All he wants is just, just follow, just walk with me. Okay, so we've talked about two things so far. Um, uh, Walking with God involves leaving. (sighs) Walking with God involves trusting. (sighs) Let's get to the good, the last good good one, okay. Walking with God involves blessing. You know, God's not inviting us into a journey to harm us. Notice the promises that he gave along with this invitation. And it was conditional. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. So there was this incredible well of blessing that was reserved for Abraham that could not be activated until he left what he was doing and did what God asked him to do. Now, please hear me, okay? Blessing with God does not 
mean just material blessing, okay? So blessing with God is not wealth or privilege. The fulfillment of the American dream, which they tell us is having 2.5 children, not quite sure how you do that, 2.5 children, a kid, a dog, a house, a white picket fence, and a well-funded 401k, all right? Now, all of those things are God's blessing, okay? But that's not the measure of God's blessing. In fact, we could argue I know that Abraham eventually later becomes rich, but we could argue that him, God calling him to leave Ur was actually a step down. I mean, he's, he's going from the stability of a city and a house to wandering like strangers in a pilgrim land. Like, and that's, that's a step up? Well, it is because he was walking with God. Uh, the relationship was the blessing. So, by definition, if we are in covenant relationship with God, we are blessed to follow Him. Think about that. I mean, this should make you smile, okay? Ready? You're a child of God. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? What did you do to, to deserve that? Right? But God has called us to walk with Him, and He has blessed us in so many ways. Now, the specific blessings that are listed here are, um, are pretty complex. In fact, entire books, uh, systems of theology have emerged out of these, these two uh, verses. Uh, and so, uh, but to condense it all down, um, what God was offering or promising to Moses was a land, uh, a seed, a son, and a blessing. Uh, uh, the land was uh, the land of Israel, right? Uh, the son was Isaac, and the blessing was ultimately Jesus, right? And so we could say a lot of things about this, but one, the, what I want us to see is that God fulfills his promise. God super fulfills it. Think about the blessing uh, that Abraham has passed on the world. Okay, he left, but what God gave him. Did you know a third of the world's population calls Abraham their father? Right? So there's the, the Jews through Isaac. There's the Arabs through, uh, through Ishmael, right? And then Christians, uh, Abraham is the father of the faithful, right? I mean, Paul really specifically says, we all come from Abraham because Abraham believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness. Wow. This, Abraham uh, uh, was so blessed in so many ways. But last thing I want us to see out of this is that when God uh, calls us to leave something, he ultimately replaces it with something so much better. Uh, notice, remember back at the beginning, we said that God uh, called Abraham. He said, I want you to leave your country. I want you to leave uh, your people, and I want you to leave your father's house. So when God uh, asked him to leave that, he just didn't leave him at that. He gave him those things back. Uh, Note the country. Remember we said that it was the city, right? So Abraham left the city, but what did he get? A nation, right? I mean, as far as your eyes can see, on every place you place your foot, God told Abraham, that's your inheritance. Wow. So from a city to a nation. Wow. Uh, the, the, the people, okay? I'm going to leave your people. Well, God called, asked him to leave his ethnic group, but he made him the father of nations, all right? And Israel, of course, is, 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 is one of them. Uh, but the, the larger ethnic group, God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace all the things that I've taken from you in, in ways that you can't even expect, but so much better. I said, I, I want you to leave your father's house. Okay, you, you may not know your grandkids, Abraham, but look up at the, at the stars because that's what your descendants will look like. That's how many you will have. And so for everything that God asked Abraham to leave, he restored to him in, 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 a, in a spiritual blessing in so 
many different ways. But the last thing where I want to kind of land the plane and then we'll be done is, to, is this, this last part of the, of the verse, this final phrase of the promise. You'll notice it says, it says, and whoever curses you will curse you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So God kind of gives his end game here. Why does he call us to walk with him? Well, he wants relationship with us. Of course, yes, he does. He also wants to develop us into the people that he has called us to be. So that means we have to leave and, and walk with him. And the more we walk with him, the more we become like him. But ultimately, God's desire is that we become a blessing to others. So think of it this way. If Abraham had never left Ur, if he had never agreed to follow God, then the nation of Israel could not have come through him. And if the nation of Israel couldn't have come through him, Jesus Christ would not have been, would not have been brought forth through his line. But there's this universal blessing that came through Abraham that we are experiencing even today. This universal blessing of Jesus, the child that was born in Bethlehem's manger, the God-man who hung on the, on the cross and left the tomb empty on the third day to provide salvation for us. What a, what a blessing. And it's through Abraham, through you, I will bless all the world. So God invites us to walk with him to answer his call so that we can uh, participate in a wider blessing of others. Uh, a channel. God wants you to be a channel of blessing. So my dad's got property up in Pennsylvania. We were just up there. And uh, it's kind of built on a hill. And there, there's uh, all of it kind of drains to one area. And that area is really marshy and it's kind of like... <laughs> And so when you take the uh, ATV through it, it's like, it's, it's just not good. So what my dad did was he, he took basically a, a plow, and he just plowed a channel. And now all of the water drains into that, and the land is so much more productive. And in fact, so much water is going down there, it's kind of carving it out. It's actually becoming almost like a little creek now, because there is a channel of blessing. God wants you to be a channel of his blessing. He wants uh, the Buckwalter family. He wants the Lever family. He, he wants, he wants uh, um, I'm going to mess up names, the Benedict family. <laughs> Nothing's coming to my mind. Yeah. He wants us to be a blessing. He wants our church to be a blessing, that we would channel his blessing to others. Let's walk with God in an unknown land. Let's pray together. Lord, uh, it has just been so wonderful to be back together in your presence and to, uh, to worship you. And so, Father, now we transition from this, this time of teaching, from this invitation to walk with you into a time of worship, because, God, you are worthy and so, Lord, as we, as we worship, Lord, I, I just ask two things uh, of you. One is, would you continue to teach us the things that we need to leave? Uh, and then second, Lord, would you just impress upon us how faithful you have been? Lord, thank you for this journey, which is made possible through your son, Jesus. Lord, bless us in our week as we join you in a walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, begin with a song that's new. Um, so I'm going to ask you to just stay seated for the beginning of the song. About halfway through, I'll invite you to stand and join us at the bridge and then into the choruses. But it's a song, again, about the goodness of God. Uh, that's the title of it, actually. Um, you know, as the Israelites traveled through the wilderness... And, and then even later on, they were often told to uh, set up a, an altar or a way to remember a monument uh, so that they would remember the goodness of God. You know, God doesn't call us to a blind faith. He calls us to step out in faith, 
But we can do that understanding what he has already done for us and, and knowing that he has been faithful and we can step out and continue to follow and trust him. So, you know, as we're looking to, to look into the new, the unknown land, um, let's step out in a faith that understands the goodness of God.
you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, God, we worship you this morning for your goodness and for your greatness. You know, church, as I was thinking this week, I, I thought about what the disciples must have felt like after the crucifixion, and they were all gathered, and, and they didn't know what was going to happen next. And, you know, for some of you, that may have be where you're at right now. You don't know what's going to happen next. For some of us, I don't think life has changed a whole lot, but there are certainly a lot of people where that life has changed a lot. And I, and I want to speak directly to the people who are streaming this, who are online, because I recognize that you are the ones that are probably the most affected by it because of those underlying conditions and why you've chosen to not be here, and it's totally understandable. But, you know, as they gathered, um, they didn't know what was happening next. But after the resurrection, after the Holy Spirit came, they had such power because Christ, Jesus, is a living hope. We know he has resurrected. We know he is back in heaven at the throne of God. And so I just wanted the next two songs, I want us to sing about that living hope that we have in Christ and we have because of Jesus. Jesus is our living hope, and he is the God of angel armies. Nothing formed against us can stand.
song. No darkness fills the night. It cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the Well, before we close this morning, I realized I think I forgot an announcement, number one. Uh, so we're, we're knocking rust off this morning. So Steve forgot his book. I almost walked up without a microphone in the first service. So we're, you know, be gracious with us. Uh, the announcement I forgot was that today is the last day to get our elder nominations in. Uh, so if you want to submit those today, 
And maybe I didn't forget it, maybe I'm just thinking I forgot it. Uh, but before we close, we do have one last uh, order of business to attend to. So in the first service, uh, both Austin and Amanda Hess were here, and Rodney and Beverly Stauffer were here. Uh, and we honored them for their commitment that they have given to us over the last couple months as we've been in lockdown and just the work that they have put in to, to bring uh, a lot of what we had Sunday mornings into our home. Uh, so Austin and Amanda obviously have led us in songs of worship for the last two months and have done a phenomenal job. Um, and Rodney has spent countless hours editing and compiling video footage so that we have what we have on a Sunday morning. And so we just, we took a, a time this morning, we blessed them with a gift bag. In that bag was uh, everything needed for a beach, a weekend uh, beach getaway to Lewis, Delaware, um, food, lodging, and a, a special trip to a restaurant. So we honored them this morning. I wanted to at least also share that with you so that you know that we did that. And then also um, one of our teens, Michaela Watson, uh, we honored her this morning as well. She has spent a lot of time putting the lyrics into the bottom of the songs that we were singing uh, from our couches. Uh, I, I made the joke in first service, hindsight is 2020. Uh, Michaela could have just typed H M M M H M M M because you know some of us were just humming at home. But uh, so thank you for being with us this morning. Um, thank you for for tuning in online or joining us in person. It was truly a blessing. Uh, and I'll close us in prayer, and we'll be on our, on our way. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that um, we as a church could always meet, Lord, even, even though we had uh, in a different format. Lord, thank you that we live in a place where, you, uh, where it, it is legal to gather and worship your name. Uh, Lord, that is a blessing that we take for granted, and uh, we can't even comprehend the realities of persecution that exist in some parts of the world. And so thank you, Lord, that, that we were able to continue to meet. Thank you that we can meet again in person and the blessing that that is. Uh, we praise you for that. Um, God, we ask that you would go with us this week as we go out um, into our worlds. Be a light. Uh, may the gospel go forward um, through the words that we say and the actions that we do. Um, and may your name be glorified. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen.